Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Very glad to be here. I, uh, I'm going to speak to you about my personal experience of building companies in Spain, especially after building companies in Spain and having grown up in Argentina as a child, but then I moved to the States and I really started building my career in the States. So it's kind of like, why would somebody leave New York City? Why would somebody leave uh, the mecca of entrepreneurship and technology to come to Madrid in 1995 uh, to build companies, right? And since 1995, I have built, uh, well, for those of you here, probably the best known company is Chastel, which I started uh, with a great team here in Madrid, and I left around 2003. And Chastel actually is a very interesting uh, story because the company was recently uh, sold uh, for $4.4 billion. So here's a company that was started completely in Spain, that focused in Spain, and that even during the crisis, it was sold uh, for $4.4 billion. It was sold by the team that came after me, who did a phenomenal work managing the company, but it couldn't have achieved that value without uh, the work we did ahead of them, especially laying off the fiber optic network that became so uh, suitable. So it is possible to come to Spain as a foreigner and build a company that after 12 years or 14 years of work got to be worth 4.4 billion. It is also, there are many stories of immigrants who came to Spain and actually did incredibly successful companies uh, I understand the founder of Mango uh, was not born in Spain. The founder of Pronovias was not born in Spain. And then there's some local stories. You probably are not aware of these, but the most successful, the most successful new company in Europe, in all of Europe, the only company in Europe that was started and got to be worth over $50 billion dollars is Inditex, okay? And Inditex, founded by Amancio Ortega, is the most successful entrepreneurial Euro uh, story of Europe, of all of Europe. Uh, then there are stories in Spain that you would say, well, Emilio Botin, who has just died, uh, he was an incredible entrepreneur. He built the largest bank in the Eurozone. Uh, yes, he was born a banker, but he left a much larger bank than the bank that he inherited. So there are significant stories of entrepreneurship that came out of Spain, stories that in some cases, like the Inditex Zara story, uh, were among the largest in Europe. Now, I'm, I'm going to focus exactly on two issues. What's wrong with Spain and what's right with Spain? Because I'm not here to tell you that there's, everything is right with Spain and you should just come and build your company here. Or I'm not telling you that if you are Spaniard, that for sure you should stay here and build your company. But I will try to give you, in the next 15 minutes, a balanced view, a balanced view of why at least we chose to stay in Spain and build Fon in Spain. So the company that I run now is called Fon. Fon is the largest Wi-Fi network in the world now, and it was built out of Spain. How is it that we chose to build a company that is practically not in Spain, because Fon is more successful even near Spain, in Portugal, in France, in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Japan, in Brazil, uh, it will come to Spain as well, but most, most but not all, the key parts of Fon are in Spain, okay? So when I started Fon, I started it out of this idea that if you share Wi-Fi, other people will share Wi-Fi with you, right? Which is something that is now incredibly common around the world. But at that time, in 2006, it sounded like an absolutely crazy idea. Uh, but as my friend Linda Rottenberg says, 
in her new book that just came out two days ago about entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship, crazy is a compliment, okay? Crazy can be extremely positive. Uh, crazy is not seen, that's a crazy idea, is not seen as a negative when it gets to entrepreneurship. So I thought that I could get millions of people to open up their Wi-Fi and share Wi-Fi with others so others would share with them. And that idea did not interest anyone in Spain. Okay, or in, it interested some people in Spain, but no comparison to the amount of interest that we got in the north of Europe, in the UK, and so on. But it did interest a lot of people in Silicon Valley. More concretely, it interested Google. Uh, and I was invited to meet Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, because he loved this concept of a global network of Wi-Fi in which you share Wi-Fi at home and you roam the world for free, connecting to everyone else who shares with you. So we went through the due diligence. So there was a team, there was Chris Saka, there was Sergey Brin, and there were many other Google people. I was there with Jurgi, a collaborator at Phone, who's now still at Phone, a wonderful uh, a collaborator at, at Phone who has done really remarkable things for us lately, the Gramophone. And when finally Google decided that they would invest in Phone, Sergey Brin said to me, when are you moving to Silicon Valley? And I was at a difficult moment because we still didn't have their money, but I had no intention to move to Silicon Valley. So, I felt I had to say the truth, even though I was risking not to get the funding. And I said, look, Sergey, we're not moving to Silicon Valley. He was extremely surprised. I said, but are you going to stay in Spain? Are you going to build a global Wi-Fi network out of Spain? He said, can you name one global company, one global technology that has come out from Spain? And I said, Fon, okay, <laughs> and you're investing in it. And he did, and they did, and they've been wonderful partners ever since. Eric Schmidt is coming tomorrow, he's a friend, a partner. Google has been incredible partners of ours. And it's interesting that Google, with us, they made their first investment anywhere in Europe. So the first investment that Google ever made in Europe in a company that was not Google was with us, here in Spain, more precisely in Alcobendas. And so, um, after Google decided to invest, a lot of key people wanted to invest, a lot of other companies, VCs, uh, Atomico, Index Ventures, wonderful partners that have accompanied us all this time. So, what's right with Spain and what's wrong in Spain in this example? What's right with Spain is that we were able to make a great product that we were able to find great engineers. What's wrong with Spain is that absolutely all the money we raised came from another place, okay? We did not get money in Spain. We got funded in Silicon Valley. We got funded in London. We got funded in Germany also to some extent. We did not get funded here, but we built the company here. Now, it's not the absolute truth to say that Phone is a Spanish company. In order to get those foreign investors, we agreed to make London the key decision center for the company. And our board meetings are held in London. And, and legally, the company is a UK company that makes its key decisions in the UK, meaning the board meeting. But the company has a lot of the, its activities, and certainly most of its employees here. We also have an office in New York. We even have an office in Rio. But 
the center of activity stayed here while the decision-making center. But why is that? Because it is very important to get global investors, and it is very important, if you can, to stay in Spain to build your business or to come to Spain. But Spain has a problem with capital available for risk. Okay, the Spaniards do not think it's crazy to invest in absolutely useless highways, airports that nobody uses, high-speed trains that nobody uses, but they think technology is a huge risk, right? They'd rather look at an empty airport, okay, because they see how nobody goes there every day. Now, that has to change in Spain. That definitely has to change in Spain. This love for infrastructure, construction, real estate. It's a love that has cost the Spanish people, who many of them, their homes are the only asset they have, and they're underwater in their only asset, their homes. The Spanish people have to develop a sense that a lot of wealth can be created in fields such as technology, fashion, and all these other things that Spain does very well. And this obsession with infrastructure, hopefully this crisis now, will go away. Having said that, what Spain has is an incredible amount of people, especially now, especially after this sad and long crisis, it has a lot of people who are, especially a young, new generation, who is willing to take risks, who is willing to join a startup, who is willing because when you're unemployed, when, you, when, the, when the alternative is to do nothing, to do a startup sounds like a pretty good choice, right? And in 2006, 2007, when we started FON, it was the boom times. Everybody had a job. It was harder to recruit people. So now it's a phenomenal time to recruit people in Spain. And there is a, an incredible unemployment rate of the people under 30. It's very interesting. The people who are the heroes, the young people who are the heroes of Silicon Valley are the unemployed people, in many cases, of Spain. And if you're an entrepreneur who's willing to give jobs to young people, like we give first jobs to so many people, in all the companies that I built, by the way, we always gave jobs to young people. For example, in Ya.com, this company that I started also in Spain, we invested 38 million euros, and we sold it a few years later to Deutsche Telekom for 550 million euros. In that company, the average age of the employees was 26. It was only, that was the average of the whole company. I remember we had a website for gay people, we had a website for housing, we have a, a website for cars, and then I said, hey, we have so many websites, because at that time it was websites and not apps. I said, we had so many websites, why don't we have a website for children? Nobody said anything. We had like 200 employees, so then I asked, how many children are there in this company? Like, out of the 200 employees we have in this company, how many children do we have? Like, how many children does all the employees in this company have? So, so I asked the woman in Human Resources to give me the answer, and she says to me, should we count your three children, or we shouldn't count your three children? And, like, nobody had children, because everyone was so young. Right? And we didn't do a website for children. We didn't do anything for children because we almost hired children. Right? And so it is, it is an incredible opportunity to hire young people now in Spain, incredible opportunity to give them a first job. And also, the new government, or the government that we now have, uh, which is not ideal, it's not that I'm here to promote either the government, they all, like everything, there's good things and bad things. But the good thing is that the new government seems to understand entrepreneurship much more than any government that came before. And what the new government seems to understand is that an, in entrepreneurship, you, everybody thinks of entrepreneurship, they think making entrepreneurship successful 
is about having an easy way to be a big success. No. Making entrepreneurship successful is partly that, but making entrepreneurship successful is to lower the cost of failure. Like failure is an inherent part of success, okay? It's, think of like sperm uh, finding an ovule, okay? You are the winning sperm, okay? So we are, startups are more like sperm, okay, than ovules. And so the issue here is there's many, there's many, but then there's success, okay? A country that doesn't create a, a tolerant failure, a tolerant, that is tolerant of failure, will never see success. Because success is a random event among failure. So what this government did very well is it lowered the cost of failure. Now, why is failure so costly in Europe? This is not just only Spain. Failure is costly in Europe because in Europe, as opposed to the US, there's a concept of forced severance pay, right? Forced severance pay. In Spanish, indemnización. So the concept of forced severance pay is, in my opinion, a great concept for large companies, established companies, companies that are successful, companies that are profitable, but forcing startups to pay for seven and pay should they be a failure is an unreasonable burden on startups, right? Well, you still have to pay uh, for seven and pay in Spain, but has, has been cut. In my opinion, maybe it shouldn't have been cut for all the companies. It should be cut to zero for the new companies and should have left for the big companies. But whatever it is, I think people deserve uh, severance pay in large companies, but in startups, the key is to have stock options. The people who built Yah.com with me, the managers who built Yah.com with me, are the group of managers, when we sold the company, they made 70 million euros. 70 million euros is a very significant amount of many years of salary. Now, what the administration of Spain and all of Europe have to understand is that startup employees are willing to trade severance pay for lower tax stock options, right? Which in America, as you may be familiar, stock options are taxed at a lower rate than ordinary income. Maybe the difference can be 40, 50% to more like 20% because you're taking a risk. You're taking a personal risk. So the taxes for starting new companies have been lower. And also Spain has this incredibly attractive Beckham law, it's called, I think, or they call it the Beckham law, that entrepreneurs or foreigners who move to Spain don't pay taxes for five years. Well, that's an incredible incentive for foreigners to move to Spain. And it's actually a smart law because hopefully after five years they like Spain so much that they stay and they pay taxes like everyone else. So Spain has lowered the, the forced severance, has lowered the taxes, um, uh, has made this pass this Beckham law, has raised capital gain taxes from 20 to 27, but has made some exceptions for people who start companies. In the end, I think it's been a more favorable employment taxation climate. Now, in Silicon Valley, there are wonderful sources of capital, and that Spain will never beat. But what there is also is an incredible amount of competition for human resources. And when you build a company in Silicon Valley, people last very little with you. There's an incredible rotation. There's a lack of loyalty. There is a, there is a, a mercenary spirit, which is understandable because there's such an incredible demand for people. And that is great if you're an engineer and you work there, but it's not great if you're an entrepreneur and you want a company and you want people to stay with you. Fon, which is doing pretty well now, almost went bankrupt in 2009. We went through bad times and then good times. Well, people didn't leave us. People didn't abandon us the way they would have abandoned us if we had been in Silicon Valley. So loyalty 
is one of the big advantages of being in Spain. People are loyal. Uh, by the way, f Spanish friends are loyal. I can say this having moved into this country, that the Spaniards are, make the best friends in the world. They're loyal people in general. They're not just loyal employees. And I think loyalty is a, is a virtue when you're trying to build a difficult company because every company will go through bad times and you don't want people to jump ship and leave you while you're going through bad times. So I think in the last 20 minutes, I have tried to give you a summary of why we decided to stay here. We decided to stay here because we could still get the money from Silicon Valley. So we could get funding in Silicon Valley and in London. We could find a great labor force and we could get going in Spain, finding an incredible group of people because the people who work at FON are unbelievably good and deploying outside of Spain so the, the Spanish crisis didn't affect us at all and we were able to grow outside of Spain. So I hope this encourages you, if you're a Spaniard, to stay building your business here, but try to have capital sources if you cannot find them here outside. And if you're a foreigner, to build businesses here and enjoy working conditions which will certainly be favorable uh, for your business. Thank you very much.